So good evening, everybody, and welcome to session one of our Braille Sense 6, The Essentials course. This is session one of four. We're with you for the next four Thursdays. We're very grateful that you've chosen to join us and learn about the Braille Sense 6. So my name is Stuart Lawler. I may have met some of you before and um, some possibly not. I'm um, from Sight and Sound Technology and I manage the uh, Irish arm of Sight and Sound Technology. And I also look after a lot of our online content um, across the Sight and Sound group in the UK. My colleague Fanula Murphy is with me and Fanula manages our communications and social media here at Sight and Sound Ireland. And um, Fanula will be uh, managing the, um, the moderation, I suppose, of the session tonight and uh, looking after your questions and answers and chat, etc. So speaking of Q&A and chat, um, we are really looking forward to hearing from you over the next couple of weeks, how you use the Braille Sense 6, your questions, your comments, any feedback you have. And you can do that by raising your hand, if you wish, during the presentation, and Fanula will, uh, will come to you at the end. Or you can post in the chat area of Zoom, so just click in chat and you can post your message and Fanula will make a note of the messages and we'll go through them at the end of the session. I'm going to speak for about 35 to 40 minutes and then we'll have about 20 minutes to do Q&A and if there's not many Q&A you get to leave early so there's the incentive perhaps. Um, so that's the way it's going to run. As I said, just before we started, these sessions are um, recorded as well. So if you miss something, you can view the recordings, which we will send out to you shortly after the session. So this is the first of four sessions, and we've kind of um, we've kind of double booked this session in some senses because we've brought we've we've merged two two sections into one because we had so much to cover. So today we're going to talk about the Braille Sense 6, give a bit of an overview and some definitions and some key commands that you may wish to know, which are kind of uh, useful globally right across um, the uh, Braille Sense 6. And then we're going to look at the file manager and talk a little bit about the importance of uh, backing up and accessing cloud storage and, and some tips um, and tricks that you may find useful. And then next week, we're going to delve into email. Um, the Braille Sense 6 has a powerful email application. Many email services are supported, and we'll talk a bit about that. In week three, we're going to do all things word processing and um, talk about how you can create and manage documents on the device. And in week four, we're going to look at reading. How can you access the wealth of material that's out there for schools and indeed leisure as well? So I hope that's uh, going to be useful. I am conscious that there may be other items that people say, why aren't we doing this? Um, and if there are, please put them in the Q&A. At the end of any session, we will have time to chat if there are questions that are not uh, sort of uh, on the topic for this evening or for any other evening. There may be occasions where we ask you to take your question offline or we ask you to get in touch with us. Sometimes if somebody has a very specific question, it's easier to manage that uh, on a one-to-one, -one, but we will do our very best. The other thing I want to say is there may be elements of the Braille Sense 6 that I'm showing over the next couple of weeks and you will say, my machine does something different. That's because I'm running a slightly different version of the software. That's because we're testing the software, some of the new software updates that are coming very shortly. And speaking of software updates, just like your mobile phone or your tablet, the Braille Sense 6 does receive regular updates. You should usually get a notification about them. But if you don't, and if you hear everybody else talking about the updates, make sure to get in touch with us and we can help you get those updates installed because they are very important. Uh, not least because they have new features and functions. And we will talk about some of those. I'll give you a glimpse next week and the week after. If that's a reason to come back, you'll hear about things that nobody else knows about. Um, just to give you a sense of what might be coming on the Braille Sense 6 uh, over the next couple of months. So I think that's all the intros and housekeeping done. Again, thank you everybody for joining us. We're looking forward to the next couple of weeks. And just to say, that this is the first in a series of uh, courses that we want to do. If you're interested in low vision and our magnification technology, then my colleague Sharon Lyons is going to be running a similar series of sessions later in the year. Stay tuned for that, either to our newsletter or social media, or just keep in touch with us. So why are we doing this, I suppose? We're, we're doing this for, for, for two reasons, I suppose. Uh, and, and I should say as well that I, I'm a 
I am I am blind and I'm a Braille user. And, and as a user of the technology, I appreciate the importance and the the significant impact that this technology can have for people, because I wouldn't be able to operate without um, refreshable Braille every day. And, and as a result of that, we want to make absolutely sure that people have the necessary skills to use this technology. And I think for most of you on the session today, you may be sighted, you may be supporting uh, children, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a special needs assistant, whether you're a resource teacher, whether you're a visiting teacher, maybe you're a parent or guardian. There's a learning curve to this stuff. It's not easy when somebody hands you a Braille device. So we want to try, and I think we have a, a responsibility actually, to make sure that the significant um, investment that has been made in this technology is absolutely used to the maximum. And hence these courses have, have come about. And you know, we, we want to do more. So that's where we are with Braille Sense. And we hope by the end of week four, you'll feel more confident about using the device. So let's look at some general characteristics and talk a little bit about the Braille Sense. If you happen to have a Braille Sense with you, feel free to work along with me. If you don't, you might like to get hold of a Braille Sense maybe from your school and then re-watch the video because it may make a little more sense afterwards. I don't have video on. I don't think you need to see me, <laughs> but we do have the screen of the Braille Sense uh, on view. And as I'm using the Braille Sense 6, you'll be able to follow along and watch the screen that's shared. So the Braille Sense 6 is an Android tablet. And Android is what powers many of our mobile phones all over the world and tablets. It's uh, So because it's Android, it means we can install applications from the, from the Play Store, from the Google Play Store. So for example, you could have WhatsApp or YouTube or Spotify or Netflix on your Braille Sense 6. Now, I'm not suggesting that everybody go out and do that, but that's just some of the things you can do. The Braille Sense 6 in its most basic form and in, and in the form that I suppose many of us use it is what we call a note taker. And note takers have actually been around for many years. In fact, it was note takers for visually impaired people that were around long before tablet devices. If anybody's um, old enough to remember something called the Palm Pilot, which I think was released around 2000 or maybe a little bit pr prior to that, that was the first real PDA that came on stream in the general market. We had Braille note takers since the late 80s. It started out with a device called the Braille and Speak, which was made by a company called Blazy Engineering in the States. Very, very popular device. And it went on from there with refreshable Braille technology. And in general, these note takers are a bit like, if you think of it like a Braille tablet, as I said, like an iPad or some kind of tablet device. So they're not fully fledged computers. They're not designed to be, but they have features and functions to allow you to be productive when you're on the move, in school, moving around classes, et cetera. So some of the things they can do, they have word processing functionality, email, web browser, calendar, calculator, file manager, schedule manager, and more. And of course, we're going to, we're going to cover some of those programs, but I, what I thought would be useful to start us off was to describe the machine a little bit and then talk to you, just give you an overview of some of the applications that are there so that you get a sense of the, the, the scope of what this, uh, of what this machine can do. The device has six Braille keys that you would find on the Perkins. There are two additional keys, one on each row. So if you uh, orient yourself around the space bar, to the left of the space bar are dots one, two, and three, and dot seven to the left of dot three. Dot seven is the backspace key. To the right of the space bar is dot four, five, and six, and dot eight on the very right, and dot eight is the enter key. So enter and backspace are to the right and left, respectively. On either side of the space bar, there are two keys. These are Alt and Control. Alt on the left, Control on the right. We're not actually going to use these keys at all. They're used more in Android applications. And we're not, certainly in these four sessions, we're not going to go into Android because it's not really priority for what most of you, I think, need to use. There are two function keys on either side of the space, Alt and Control set of keys. Two on the left are F1 and F3 going from the left to right. And the function keys have little dots or little markings on them. So again, um, a tactile learner should be able to identify them. So F1 on the left, F2 on the right. 
And if I go over to the other side, F3 uh, on the right and F4, uh, um, F4 on the very um, outer right. The function key F1 will always bring you back to your main menu. And we'll talk about the main menu in a sec. If you get lost somewhere, you get stuck, and you don't know where you are, press F1. Function key F2 will always bring you to the menu relative to the application that you are currently in. So if you're in the word processor, F2 will bring you to the menu relevant to the word processor. And we'll see a lot of that when we start using word processor and email. F3 is the equivalent of the tab key. We will be using F3 a bit when we're using the word processor. And F4 is the escape key. Now it's worth saying that there are Braille equivalents for all those function keys. And why do I mention that? Because seasoned Braillists, and I suppose I've been using Braille for quite a while, seasoned Braillists don't like to take their hands off the Braille keys to press a function key to do something. So this might sound strange to you, but I very rarely use the function keys. I use a combination, key combinations that will simulate those function keys. I'm not going to go into those very much unless there's very specific questions about it, but just know that it's another way to operate the machine. In fact, as with many things in technology, there are many ways to do everything on the Braille Sense 6. I'll give you a few ways. I might give you my preference sometimes, but just because it's my preference, it doesn't mean it's the right way for you or your student. So you work with, with work with whatever works best for you. Okay, one uh, some other things worth mentioning. The Braille display itself runs along the bottom of the device. There are 32 Braille cells. That means 32 characters can be shown on a line. At either end of the Braille display, there are two uh, squarish keys, I suppose I call them, and they're panning keys. They move the Braille forward and back or up and down. And above each Braille cell, you'll notice a little button. These are called cursor routing keys. I'm not going to go into cursor routing now, but I will show it in depth when we explore the word processor in two weeks' time. So if you want to know about cursor routing, make sure you come back in two weeks' time. Um. The Braille Sense 6 has a rechargeable battery, and we're always asked, how much do you get from the battery? It's a very tricky question to answer because it depends very much on your usage. I think the manual gives us an estimation of between 18 and 20 hours. I think that's being a little optimistic, if I'm being honest. I would go somewhere between 12 and 15. But this will be determined by how you're using the device and what resources you're using. For example, Bluetooth, which is a wireless technology, will use more battery, as will using Wi-Fi. And speaking of Wi-Fi, there are other ways that this device can be connected to external peripherals, like screens or mobile phones, so that you can actually view in real time the output of the Braille display on a handheld tablet or phone that is wirelessly connected to the Braille Sense. We're not covering that in this series of sessions, but if people have specific questions about it, you can get in touch and you can also connect wired monitors to the device as well. There are two USB ports for plugging in external uh, memory sticks or hard drives, or indeed lots of other things. You can connect cameras to this thing. There's a USB-C uh, port for charging the device, and there's a USB-C port for video. I just mentioned the fact that you can connect screens. So there's a lot of um, functionality to allow you to connect different technology to this device. Okay, let's have a look then at the main menu. Just explore what is available. I'm not going to go into every option here. I'm going to give a quick synopsis as we go through, and just to give you an overview of some of the things that this device can do. I mentioned the function keys a few minutes ago. F1 will always bring us back to the main menu. And before I do that, I just want to say there is nothing you can do with this device that's going to really damage it other than, you know, dropping it out a window or something. But there is nothing from a software perspective that you can do. And sometimes we encourage those of you who are in schools, if you have the, the time or you have the capacity or, or it's possible to bring the device home for, for maybe a, a weekend or, or I don't know, for, for a few nights and just play with it. The very In a very worst case scenario, we'll have to reset the device and we can help you do that. And you lose, if there's any information on the device, you'll lose it. But then by the end of today, you'll know how to back up information. So hopefully that won't happen in the first place. But do take the device home, 
or take or sit in a, a quiet space where you can have the device and play with it and try things out. And if you get stuck, always press F1 and the device will say file manager, file manager, file manager is the first option in the main menu. And think of the main menu a bit like your iPhones or your uh, Android phones home screen or your Windows, you know, start screen where you have all your icons. This is our uh, version of that, I suppose. So file manager is the first option. I'm not going to say anything about file manager because that is the app we are going to come back to in a couple of minutes. Now, how do we move from one option to another? There are at least three and possibly more ways to do this. The first way you can do it is by holding down the space bar and pressing dot four. That's the key to the right of the space bar to move forward from one application to the next. By the way, that type of command is called a chord command. So if I say to you C chord, that means you hold the space bar and you press the letter C, which is dots one and four. The reason they call them chords is because you're using multiple fingers and you get the idea of chords from playing, for example, a keyboard. So space with dot four will move forward in the list. Word processor, notepad, email. Space with dot one, which is the other side of the space bar, will move back. Notepad, word processor, file manager. So that's the first way you can do it. And it's, it's funny because I've been doing this for so long. That's probably the way I tend to teach people. But there are two other ways. The second way you can do it is by pressing the space bar to move forward. Word processor, notepad. Email. And you can press the backspace key, which is at the very left, as we said, it's beside dot three, to go back. Notepad, word processor, file manager. And the third way you can do it, and maybe the most efficient way in some respects, is you can press the first letter of the name of the application. So if I pressed E, it would open my email. If I pressed W, it would open my word processor. If I pressed N, it would open my notepad. Let's just try N, for example. Top of document. And it just says top of document. It's opened a blank uh, file in the notepad application. This meeting is being recorded. Um, we're not going to. File manager. We're not going to talk about the notepad, uh, but it is very similar to the word processor. So that's how you move forward and back through the main menu. So let's have a really quick look at the main menu. So you know how to move forward and back. You can pick your own way out of those three, whatever, pref whatever preference you have. Obviously, if you want to just browse the menu, you're going to pick one of the first two. So we said we come back to the file manager. The next option is the word processor. Word processor. And we will be delving in detail into the word processor in two weeks' time um, and learning all about it. So um, come back for that if you wish. Notepad. The notepad is very similar to the word processor, except there are some differentiation in tasks. So the notepad is used if you are going to emboss uh, documents from the Braille Sense 6 to a Braille embosser. The notepad and word processor can uh, interchange files and can share the same documents. So you can open up documents you created on the word processor in the notepad and vice versa. The notepad doesn't have all the formatting functions of the word processor, but it can be faster for some tasks. And we'll talk a bit about maybe the good and bad points of the word processor when we come on to talk about it. I'm going to keep moving forward. Email. This is the email application. We're going to delve into email in week two. So come back for that next week if you want to learn about email. Media. This is the media menu. This is a, a sub menu. So there are some things in here. I'm just going to press enter for a sec. Media player. This is the media player. So you can copy music or audio books or, or other things onto this device and listen to them using the media player. FM radio. This is the FM radio. There's a good standard FM radio. If you just want FM local stations, you can use the FM radio. You do need to use this with um, a headset because it needs a wire to act as an aerial, but you can use it. Podcasts. The podcast app allows you to subscribe, download, and listen to podcasts. Web radio. This is the web radio. So the web radio, as opposed to the standard um, FM radio, uses the internet to play stations. So you can listen to stations from all over the world. Voice recorder. And this is the voice recorder. So the voice recorder is not unlike, if anyone has a, um, an iPhone, there's a, there's a thing called voice memos. It, it's sort of similar. 
Um, I know I have, a, I have a couple of students in university who are using this for recording lectures. Um, so that sort of stuff is available. It's worth saying at this point, because some people might be watching this and saying, I don't want students to have access to this in school, or how am I going to know that, you know, a student isn't listening to the radio while he should be doing something else? We can, on request, uh, disable or hide any of these apps so that they're not available to students. We don't tell people how to do that for obvious reasons, but if you want something hidden, we can uh, we can help with that. So again, just let us know if there's something like that that you need fixed. Task name, Zoom. File, file map. It's also worth saying, by the way, that we can uh, do things like um, disabling the spell check. So if somebody is doing exams and you don't want them to have access to spell check, that can be disabled. Those things are not documented in the manual and it's not information we give out, but we can help people do these things if they need. So let's scroll back to media. Email, media, books. This is the books area. I'm not going to go in here because we're going to spend a whole week, a whole session in week four. Uh, looking at books and how to access books and reading books. Organizer. This is the organizer. There are two options in here. There's the address manager, which is the equivalent of the contacts app on your phone, I suppose. And there is the schedule manager, which is just a calendar. It's i uh, I'm not sure why they call it schedule manager, but it's, it's a calendar. I do want to mention just maybe two things about the schedule manager. Uh, the first is that this is very useful if, as a skill, if you're thinking of where you might introduce this. Kids who are going into sixth class would be, would be well advised, I think, to learn how to use the schedule manager because it can be very useful when they go into secondary to put their timetable in because then they can get reminders. I know when I started secondary and I was only saying to someone the, uh, today, I think the move from primary to secondary is the biggest jolt transition wise than, than of anything I think you do so secondary to college is not so bad but primary to secondary is a huge jump for lots of reasons and if you're visually impaired I think it's an even bigger jump and trying to remember where you are in your classes and all that kind of stuff it can be useful to have your timetable in your braille sense and if you have that skill to use the calendar it makes life easier the second thing I'll say is that we've helped a couple of parents where uh, there may be a shared calendar, say there's um, a Google calendar, a shared Google calendar that, that the family have. Instead of having a calendar on the fridge, everyone puts their, their stuff in the Google calendar and we can uh, sync that with the Braille Sense. So the visually impaired fam uh, family member gets all the appointments and can add appointments of their own. And it gives parents a bit of peace of mind, I think, as well, because they can control what's going into that calendar as well. It's another useful, another good use of the calendar. Web tools. This is the web tools. In here, we have a web browser and we have something that's very new, which I'm not going to get time to show you in this set, in this course, but I will say to you that there is an optional, and it is optional for reasons that you'll understand, an optional add-on to have chat GPT on the Braille Sense. Not something that it's going to ship with by default, but something that we can help install if people want it. The web browser as it stands currently is not very useful, I suppose is the best way to say it. And we tend to encourage people to use the web on Windows or, or other platforms at the moment. But there is a new web browser being developed for the Braille Sense 6, and you will get access to that as part of an update. All the updates for the Braille Sense 6 are free of charge, just as they are for your phones, until the technology gets to such a point that it can't be supported anymore. And then the updates just stop, stop coming, as in the case of the, uh, of the Polaris, which was the predecessor to the Braille Sense 6. Extras. This is something called extras. There's something in here worth looking at called the Sense Dictionary, where you can get uh, meanings of words. We we might get to have a quick look at it when we look at the word processor, but it is available with the Braille Sense 6 and definitely worth having a play with. Utilities. The utilities uh, menu has a whole load of little things, including the calculator. We're not going to look at the calculator in this uh, series of, of sessions unless somebody really wants us to, um, but it's probably something we should do at some point. But the other thing inside the utilities menu is the option to automatically update your Braille Sense 6 to the latest firmware. If you're not told about an update, if the system doesn't tell you, you can always go in here and check. And again, contact us if you need help in that regard. Settings. The settings menu has lots and lots of things in here. So you can configure, for example, the voice, you can configure the type of Braille, you can set the date and time, you can configure 
your wireless networks and get it connected. There's a whole load of things in there, uh, some of which we may make reference to uh, over the next couple of weeks. Help. The help menu is worth knowing about because the entire user guide is in here. And a nice navigation uh, help because you can navigate to any specific topic and press enter on it and have the device read it to you or have the student read it. If anyone needs a copy of the manual, please send us an email uh, either to myself or Fanula, and we'll make sure that you get a copy if you want it after this session. Play Store. This is the Play Store. I mentioned a few minutes ago, this is an Android device. So the Play Store allows us to go and download applications uh, for the Braille Sense 6. It's not something that we tend to teach people about in schools, but you know, um, inevitably, as people have their device for a while, they do want to get curious and understand the potential of the Play Store. I suppose the one thing to say about the Play Store is that apps that are installed might not necessarily always be accessible. Not every app, unfortunately, was made to be accessible with a Braille device. So you'd kind of use them at your own risk and see how you get on. We do have some recommendations for apps that we've certainly looked at. And I think the um, the community of, of Braille Sense users, I think, have are, are always kind of exploring apps. So, you know, if there's something you're interested in, do ask. All apps. And this is something called All Apps. And if I was to go in here, we would find all the apps that I have downloaded onto my device. So just really quickly. G Apple Music. Here's Apple Music. Assistant. Calculator. Google Assistant. Calendar. Sear Play. And in here somewhere is the Zoom app, which I am using to... Uh, to share my screen for this session. All apps. Okay. File manager. So that's a really quick look at the overview of the device. You can get a sense there from there, I think, uh, as to what the device can do and that a lot of it is, is far more than what we're doing in this Braille Sense, the essentials course, but we have picked, I, I, I hope, what we think are the essential areas that people might like to look at. Um, now, I want to just mention two particular keystrokes that might be very useful, and I'm just watching my time. Um, so we have about another 15 minutes, so that's okay. I just want to pick, uh, mention two keystrokes that are particularly useful. One of the things you'll want to do, or you'll want to know at any time, is what's the battery level? When do, you, when do I need to plug this thing in? And in secondary schools in particular, where you're moving around, you might not always have a charger with you in primary school. It might be a little more manageable to do this and plug it in at will. But it's not always convenient either. So to check the battery, we do CH chord. And you remember when I mentioned chord before, I mean space with CH. So the CH contraction is dots one and six. And I will, by the way, as we're giving Braille uh, letters and, com and combinations out throughout the four weeks, I will make sure to give the dot patterns as well, because we can't assume that everybody knows all the braille code and that's absolutely fine so space with dot one and six is to check the battery now ch i always think is ch is for charge that's how i remember that check my charge so if i press space and ch now 94 charged using battery static box so it says 94 on my braille display it says 94 percent charged using battery and this is what's called a static box it's a static piece of information that has stayed on my screen to give me time to read it. Now I want to I want to dismiss that and go back to my main menu. How am I going to do it? I'm going to press F4, which we said was the escape key. File manager. I could also press, and you will find if you stay with us for four weeks, you you will find one of these as my probably favorite keystroke. Space and Z will do the same thing. It's the exit command or the close command or the escape command. Uh, so that's another one to know. Now. The other useful command is space and N for network. And this will tell you whether or not you are connected to a network. We get lots of calls from people, you know, suddenly might do, the student's email won't work or they, they can't do something. They can't connect to their cloud storage or they can't connect to their uh, screen mirroring application so that, for example, uh, the SNA can't see what they're doing. The first thing I say is, is the, is the Wi-Fi on? Because we know that school Wi-Fis are, are notoriously bad, aren't they? I mean, most schools have challenges, I think, because they're older buildings and because they're trying to provide high quality Wi-Fi across a large area. And, I, you know, it's very difficult for schools to do this. So checking your Wi-Fi, checking that your Wi-Fi is online before you get in touch with us is a really good idea. So you can do that with spacebar and N or N cord, N for network. So we do that now. Checking. 
status, online, wireless, oh. static box. And we are online. It's another static box. So it says status, online, wireless. Fantastic. And I can press F4. File manager. And that quits. One more that I'll give you, probably not as essential, but uh, students like to know about it. And that's checking the time. So if someone's, you know, wanting to know how long they have to sit in the class, space and T or T chord. 08. 32, 31 p.m. static box. There we go. 8.32 and 31. And the seconds keep changing on my Braille display. 38 seconds, 39, 40. And I'll press F4. File manager. To stop that. Okay. There's a couple of commands that might be of use for you. So let's talk about the file manager for 15 or so minutes if, if we can. This is really important. Again, when people are getting into fifth class, sixth class, they really need to be learning about this. And look, I know file management is not exciting. It's quite boring. But I was only talking to a teacher a friend of mine a couple of months ago who is teaching in a mainstream secondary school, doesn't have any blind or low vision kids in the class. And I was sort of saying something along the lines of, you know, it's really difficult to get people into file management and people don't seem to have any system. And he said to me, it's not just visually impaired. He said, it's kids in general. They don't do this stuff. And look, if they don't do this stuff, that's fine. But as visually impaired people, we really need to, and we need to instill it in people because having a system to find information is going to be really, really important. So the file manager does just that. It allows us to create folders and move and copy files and do all that kind of stuff and do this all important backup. I mentioned earlier that there's nothing you can do that's going to damage this system. Well, there probably is one thing you can do, and that's if we do need to reset the system or if something got deleted. You can't get it back. There isn't a recycle bin, unfortunately, on the Braille Sense 6. It'd be great if there was, and it's been requested a few times, but they have yet to tell us whether they're going to do that but um it, it is really good and we keep i keep talking to schools about this have a backup procedure have something and this could be as so simple as someone saying on a friday afternoon maybe the sna or resource teacher someone says before i go home i'm going to take that braille sense plug a memory stick in and just copy uh you know copy copy the folders over for the last week so that I, we have a backup the most recent backup and if something gets deleted then next tuesday look we've lost a day's work but we have everything else or it might be someone saying we're going to back up to the cloud every Friday at three o'clock before the student goes home. And of course, as people get a bit older, they'll manage their own backups. So let's have a look at the file manager. So when we open, we go back to the main menu. File manager. Although we were there already, but I always think like to start people with an anchor point. We press F1 to go back. Now it says file manager. I'm going to press the enter key here. Flash disk one for list item. And I hear my Braille sense saying flash disk, and then it says one slash four. That means one of four. So there are four items here in a list. The first one is called flash disk. Now, flash disk, and this was very confusing for me initially, because you, you sometimes think of flash disk as a, um, a USB disk or an external disk. Flash disk is actually the name of the internal memory in the Braille sense. So when you hear flash disk, that's the internal memory. We'll go into the internal memory in a minute. I'm going to press the, I'm going to scroll down and I scroll down the very same way I scrolled in the main menu, space and dot four. Google Drive two, four list item. This is Google Drive and it's option two of four, two slash four. So this would allow me to go into my Google Drive and I'm going to go there in a minute. If I hadn't signed in the first time I do this, I'll be asked to sign in with my Gmail username and password. And this is something we help people set up, by the way, as part of the initial training and setup when we come to visit your school. I'll scroll down again. OneDrive 3, 4 list item. OneDrive is Microsoft's version of, um, of Google Drive. So it's either Google or Microsoft, I think, in general in schools here. Uh, so thankfully, they're both supported. So if you have Google, you can use Google Drive. If you have OneDrive, if you have um, 365, you can use OneDrive. And they're both supported. And the last option. Dropbox for four list items. Is Dropbox. Now, there are four items that are available to me at the moment. If I had some external media plugged in, and I don't think, I was just looking to see, do I have a USB stick handy? I don't think I do. If I had an external USB stick, I'd have five items here because it would show my USB drive as well as all the others. 
So that's what you'll see the first when you open the file manager the first time. So what you would probably start by doing is going to the flash disk. So let me scroll back up with space and dot one. What good flash disk one for a list item. And I'm going to press enter. Audiobooks folder 118 list item. And now I'm looking at my internal storage on the Braille Sense. And there's a folder called audiobooks. Okay. So I'm now going to scroll down. Bookshare folder 218 list item. A folder called Bookshare. Daisy folder 318 list item. Daisy. Database folder 418 list item. Database. Documents folder 518 list item. Documents. Documents might be the most important folder you need because all your documents that you create in your word processor and notepad are saved by default into the documents folder unless you choose to put them somewhere else. And I don't really recommend it unless there's a very specific reason. What you can do in the documents folder is create what are called subfolders. And when we, we're not going to do this tonight about saving into them, but when we use the word processor, we will save into different folders. So I'm going to create the folders tonight. And when we come back to the word processor in two weeks time, we'll start using these folders. So let's press enter here. Exclamation point to do a doc docs one five list item. I don't know what that file is, but I'm going to now create a new folder. I want to create a couple of subject folders. And to create a folder, I'm going to use a shortcut key, which is enter and F, F for file or F for folder. So I'll press enter. We've said the very the key on the very right to the right of dot six and the letter F. So I'm holding down enter. I'm pressing F. New folder dialog. New folder name. New folder edit box. And I'm going to call this English and press enter. New folder created. English folder one six list item. I should add that my braille set my keyboard is set not to speak at all by default if you were doing this on your machine or your machine in school you would hear this speak as you type um because that might be kind of put some people off so we've created english let's do another one we'll do enter and f again new folder dialogue and we'll do new irish folder name. new folder edit box and we'll press enter new folder created irish folder 27 we'll create two more we'll do history new folder we we'll press enter. New folder created. And we'll do science. New folder dive. New folder name. New, fo new folder created. Science folder 49 list item. Now, folders are always listed first and files are listed afterwards. And everything is listed alphabetically. So you'll have your first set of alphabetical lists will be your folders. So if I go to the top. I English folder 19 list item. Here's English. History folder two nine list item. History. Irish folder three Irish, nine list item. Science, science folder four. Nine. If I enter in any of these folders, so I'll go into science. No items list item. There's no items. That folder is empty. If I press the backspace key. Science folder four nine. I'm back in the science folder. Now, I could, um, if I wanted, I could create subfolders in there. So this really is a very personal thing. It depends how people like to organize stuff. But I would suggest the subject folder inside there, a folder called books with the text books relevant to the subject a folder called homework, and maybe a folder called classwork or notes or something. But that's just me. Some people like to just have a books folder with all their textbooks, you know, so to, everyone has a personal way that they like their stuff to be organized. And that's a, definitely a discussion to have with your student and work out a system that works for them. And bearing in mind that the system you just, you choose you know, you, you, there might be trial and error. You might in, in three, four weeks time, make some changes to that file management system. And it doesn't matter about that. Okay, uh, so we've created a few folders. We're gonna come back to those folders um, in week three, when we start saving some stuff into them. And we'll also do another backup in week three of our documents folder. But I wanna come out of the documents folder for a second. So I'm gonna press the backspace key. Documents folder 518 list item. And I'm going to go up to my bookshare folder. So space with dot one. Da Daisy folder, bookshare folder two. Before I go, I'm going to make sure there is actually stuff in the bookshare folder because I can't remember. Kidnap folder one four list item. My name is Matt on folder two four. The catcher in the right folder three four. The green mile folder four four list item. Okay. Um, despite having downloaded those books, I'm not sure I've actually read any of them. But anyway, they're here. So I'm going to press the backspace key to go back to books. Bookshare folder 218 list item. I'll go back to, uh, to bookshare rather. I want to copy. I want to back up this bookshare folder in case anything happens to my device. I want to put it on my Google Drive so that it's safe. And this is the type of thing you might be doing in class. So I am in 
I am in the flash disk. I am sitting on, uh, on the Bookshare folder, but I have not opened it yet. I'm just sitting on the folder. And I want to copy that folder so that I can put it somewhere else. Now, there are two things worth saying here. There's copying and there's cutting or moving. And this is this is not specific to the breath sense, by the way. This is just general within computers. If you cut something, you're cutting it. You're taking it from one location and putting it somewhere else. If you copy something, you're taking it from the location, but you're keeping it in the location. So you're taking it up, you're lifting it up, or you're moving it somewhere else, but you're keeping the copy, the original, in the location. Moving is a bit dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or if you make a mistake and then you potentially lose what you've moved. So I always suggest copying. If I do enter and C, C for copy at this point, my Bookshare folder will be copied in preparation to be pasted or, or put somewhere else. So I'm going to press enter and C. Copying. Bookshare folder 218 list item. My device said copying, and then it immediately brought me back to the Bookshare folder. So I know that Bookshare folder is sitting on the, the clipboard ready to be put somewhere else. And this is kind of not just Braille Sense terminology. This is computer terminology. If you were doing this in... In Windows, you would do Control and C to copy. Now I'm going to press the backspace key. Flash disk one four list. To go back to my list of folders, or my list of drives rather. And I'm going to go down to my Google Drive. Google Drive two four list item. And I'm going to press enter. Now it's worth saying, before you go to Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox, remember these are cloud storages. These require you to be connected to the internet. So if my Wi-Fi wasn't working at this point, we could go no further. But we didn't, we, we did check, didn't we, with space and N. We were told we were connected to Wi-Fi. So I can press enter here to open this folder. My drive folder one, three list item. There are three options inside both Google Drive and OneDrive. It's worth mentioning to you what they are. The first one is my drive. This is your personal uh, storage on whatever cloud service you're using, whether it be Google Drive or OneDrive. Share drives folder two, three list item. Uh, the next one is it's slightly different. I think in Google, this is called shared drives. This is drives, other people's drives that may have been shared with you. Shared with me folder three, three list item. And the last one is shared with me. If you have any students using Google Classroom, they may encounter this stuff a little bit. Um, and we can talk. I might make some general comments at the end of this session, actually, about just applications and things like Google Classroom. But let's go back to my drive. My drive folder one. Th By the way, I'm using space with dot four and space with dot one, as I mentioned earlier, to navigate around this area. I'm going to press enter here. At the end of the sky. So in layout. OK, there's a load of folders in here in my Google Drive. The first one is called at the end of the sky. It's the name of the CD. I actually want to create a folder here that I'm going to put all my Braille Sense 6 stuff into. So we're going to do our create folder command again with enter and F. New folder dialog. And I'm going to call this Braille Sense 6. Braille Sense 6. Backups. Backups. Spe creating. New folder created. At the end of the Scott Braille Sense 6 backups folder 730. Did you notice? You might have noticed, maybe not. It took a little, just fractionally a second or two longer to create. That's because it's doing this stuff online. It's, it's doing it in the cloud. So it has now created on my Google Drive a folder called Braille Sense 6 backups. So let's press enter here. No items, list item. And now, remember, it seems a little while ago now, we copied something, didn't we? We copied the Bookshare folder, ready to put it somewhere. Well, now we're ready to put it in this very place, in the empty uh, Braille Sense 6 backup folder. And to copy or to paste something, we press Enter and V for Victor. If you were pasting on Windows, by the way, it would be Control and V. So I'm going to do Enter and V. Uploading. Zero. And it's uploading. And um, it's... 100, the catcher in the right. 100, the catcher in the right. 100, the catcher in... 100, the catcher in the... 100, book 2000. 100, the catcher in... 100, the catcher in... 100, the catcher in the... 100 days, 100, the catcher. Okay, I'm just going to turn that down for a minute. What it's doing and now is it's copying the data. Uh, I should, probably shouldn't have copied that whole folder because there's quite a lot in it, but it's uploading these files to Google. And this is what, this is the procedure you would do if you were copying a large amount of data um, to the Braille Sense. 100 the green miles here. 100 the green miles. Okay, it's on the green miles. So it's nearly finished. So it's copying the, the uh, bookshare. There are a number of files in each of these books. It's copying them all. We have a 
pretty good Wi-Fi here. So it's it's pretty fast. You may it may not always be this fast for you, um, but it's copying over. While we're doing that, I just want to make a bit of a comment because we've uh, made reference to Google Classroom and other things while we're going along. This is the Braille Sense's own built-in file manager. You could use Google Drive and you can use Google Classroom and you can use Google Docs even, which is the, um, the Google uh, word processor. You can use Microsoft Word Online as well. The problem with some of these mainstream apps is whilst they work in theory on the Braille Sense 6, they are not the most efficient way for a Braille Sense 6 user to access or to use, for example, a word processor. So if I create a file in the word processor or a document, and there's that folder has just been uploaded, so that's good. So let's just see now, we'll go back. We'll go back. Braille Sense 6 backups folder. There's the folder, I'll press enter. Bookshare folder one, one list item. Okay, that's Bookshare. If I was to create a document in the word processor on the Braille Sense 6 and save it to my Google Drive, I could then go and share that document with Fanula and she could make some changes to it and then I'd see the changes she's making. Now, it's very important to say, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about the word processor. Whilst you can do that, you can't do it in real time. So Google Docs and Word have these great features that you know, Fanula and myself and maybe some of the rest of us in this group could all be collaborating on a document. And if you're doing this uh, as a sighted user, you'll all see what people are doing and see people's edits. The Braille Sense 6 doesn't have that sophistication yet. It might have in the future, but it doesn't have yet. So it's important to be aware of, I wouldn't say, well, limitations, I suppose, but also it's important to be aware of what's going to work best, what's going to give the optimal, um, efficient, I suppose, um, experience for your for your students. Okay, uh, we've done, we haven't covered everything in the file manager and we may come back to it when we do the word processor because it kind of sits nicely, but I am very conscious that I've talked, hopefully not at you too much, but I've talked for a long time and given a lot of information and we have about 10 minutes or a little over remaining in the session. And I do want to make sure we allow time for questions and, and comments. So. With that in mind, I'm going to pass it back to Fanula uh, to see if we have any raised hands or anything in chat. And, and if we don't, and if you want to put something in now, that's also perfectly okay. So Fanula, I don't know if we have anything. We have nothing at the moment. Um, sorry, I was plugging in my headphones there. I have a small okay. reading here beside me. So, <laughs> um. And I thought I could listen to you all night's church. So. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that means people are very confused or very happy. I don't know. I'm not um, sure which. If there is any. And, and I mean, if anyone Hang on, wants just to. Make sure I didn't miss the chat. Sorry. Um, I, do you know anyone, when yeah. you switch between Zoom and Teams, it's very confusing. So It is. Yes, because <laughs> we tend to use Teams more in Sight and Sound. And now we're back to Zoom. If anyone wants to share, for example, anything that you're doing with the. It's a small group here. Anything you're doing with the Braille Sense 6 in your school, maybe anything that because uh, I have no doubt, by the way, that I'm going to learn something by the end of these four weeks. What are you What are you doing that might be different that we haven't thought of? Uh, Steve Jobs um, from Apple famously said years ago, what he enjoyed most was hearing how people used Apple products in ways that Apple had never thought of. And I, I kind of think that's a really interesting thing to say, because it's kind of how I sometimes think about this technology. And we sometimes find that students, for example, have done something kind of really you know interesting that's made something more um efficient or easier to do so if, if anyone wants to share anything like that as well uh that might be very interesting now Stuart Sinead has her hand up and I Brilliant. must admit that I forget how to I think you can just press on mute and it should oh, unmute mute. Sinead Phew. yeah I'm a brilliant helper aren't I? <laughs> Sinead I think you should be able to I don't know if you have to unmute yourself or you might be unmuted already uh, it might send you a yeah, you're on mute now. Hi, Sinead. Hi, thanks very much, um, Stuart. And I have Neve with me actually as well. And, Hi, Neve. Um, thank you. Hi. Yeah. Thank Brill. you very much. It's we've really enjoyed this evening. Neve has a question, so I'm just going to let her fire away if you don't mind. If no I problem. Were to, if I were to open a Word document, how do I save it to a specific folder in my Google Drive? That's a great question. Do you mind? I'm not trying to dodge it. Do you mind coming back in week three? Because that's exactly the kind of stuff we're going to cover, Neve. Yeah, when we do fair. the word when we do the word processor, because it's more involved. So I want to give you a proper answer. Is that okay? Yeah, 
Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. And there's a question. Anna has a question. I was trying to add an email on the Braille Sense and having problems with the at symbol. Yes. Uh, so, Anna, this is <clears throat> potentially, I wonder, were you in uncontracted Braille? So the UEB, and it's worth saying, I think we're all she UEB, was, Stuart. in contracted. Uncontracted. Uncontracted. I think, yeah. yeah. So I think, Anna, if you press space and G to go into contracted Braille, the at symbol is dot four followed by dot one in UEB and UEB is default on the Braille Sense 6 now. So we're, we're, we're all using UEB. Um, so that might be the one to, that might be what you were, what you were trying to do. We will be setting up an email. We will be going through configuring an email next week. So if anyone wants to have a look at that, we'll be configuring a Microsoft email next week. Is that okay, Anna, did that answer? Yeah, okay. Um, Siobhan, if the laptop is connected to the Braille Sense and you move folders, will those changes be reflected on the Braille Sense? Oh, great question. And I should have addressed this. The answer is yes. So for anyone who has the, the in your Braille Sense box, you will have received the little charging block and a USB-C cable. It has two small ends, USB-C to USB-C. You can connect that from the port, the USB-C charging port on your Braille Sense, which is at the back right to a port on your computer, and that will pop up as a drive. So it's like when you plug a memory stick into your computer. And yeah, great question, Siobhan. If you change things on the computer, it will synchronize automatically in real time on the Braille Sense. So sometimes people who are non-Braille users find this a really useful way to help students, especially younger students, tidy up their device. You know, people just have loads of files all over the place. And maybe um, an SNA or a resource teacher is sitting down with a laptop trying to tidy this up a little bit and create some folders and make put some kind of organization into it. So yeah, the the um, that's another really good way to do it. I know another way people used to use it was teacher last year. They had a they were a Google school. They were very much a Google school. Everyone had a one had a had a Google Drive. The student would just put stuff on Google Drive, and the teacher would do all the the folder management, and uh, that would all just synchronize. Great. Anybody else? Just uh, some thank yous, Stuart, and people Brilliant. seem to enjoy the session, which is great. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, uh, we are almost five minutes to the hour. So just again, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for your uh, for your questions and your comments and, your and for taking the time to join us tonight. Uh, we are looking forward to, to next week when we're uh, looking at email and uh, Fanula and I'll be back with you and many thanks of course uh, to Fanula as well it's been really great to have somebody helping with all the moderation and um, if there are queries in the meantime I think everyone has my email address from the registration please get in touch you know you might look back at this tomorrow and, and say what did he mean because I ask myself that all the time so please do get in touch if you need anything in the meantime otherwise we look forward to seeing you next um, Thursday night uh, at eight o'clock. So thanks a million, everybody. Great. Thanks, everybody. And enjoy.